How can it be? I want you to, I hope those words will kind of burn in your mind this morning as we think about God. And I see Gerald has the I Am posted in the background this morning, and that's God. I Am. Have you really thought about that? How can it be that we have any function, any reality at all to even be able to talk to God? To have a relationship with God, the, the Almighty, the Holy, the Righteous God, and that He cares for you? I really don't understand that, really, when I get down and think about it. How can it be, God, that you care about me and that He cares about you? How can that be? I don't I heard I was reading this week and it said if you don't have God in the proper position in your life that that life is God and that everything is about God there's a good chance you probably don't really know God. Now think about that. Do you have God in the proper place in your life? Life is God. He's provided life for us and we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. Think about how can it be? Let's pray. God, I'm excited just to be in your house this morning. Did we wake up, Lord, this morning with the expectation that we get to worship you today? That we get to worship you every day? Lord, is my life about you? Is our life about you, God? Every second of every day is it about serving, pleasing, loving, and worshiping God. God, help us to see through your word this morning. Help us to think this morning about what a relationship with you is all about. God, you are life. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Open your Bibles this morning to Psalm chapter 8 with me, please. And uh, Brittany, thank you. And Katie, thank you for singing and signing to that song this morning for us. Um, when I first heard that song, it really started... And that's been a long time ago now. I don't, I'm not sure how old that song really is now, but uh, it really made me think about how can it be, God? How can it be that you're mindful of me? How, why do you care about a sinful person like myself? So let's read Psalm 8. O Lord, O our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. I want you to go back and look at that verse 4 again. What is man that you are mindful of him? Have you thought about that lately? I mean, seriously, have you sat down and thought, why does God care about you? Why does God provide for you? Why has God given you a, a chance for salvation? Why, God? Why do you care about us? When we, we go back to the beginning of the Bible and we look at, at Genesis 2-7, we're made from dirt, we're nothing but dirt. It says in Genesis 2-7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. You're made from dirt. We're made from dirt. God formed us made us, and then cares so much about us, loves us so much that He breathed into our nostrils and gave us life. You and I are nothing without God. We're nothing 
But do we live like that? Do we serve God like that? That's the question for us this morning. Isaiah, if you want to flip over there with me to that real quick, Isaiah tells us again what we're worth. In Isaiah 64 and verse 6, Isaiah 64, verse 6 says, But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. We're an unclean thing. We are filthy rags before this holy, mighty, righteous God. Have you compared yourself to God lately? Seen where you stand with God. We're dirt. We're unclean. We're filthy rags before God. Now, I, I'm not trying to beat you down, even though it sounds like that, but I'm wanting us to see how much God cares about us and what He's done for us, and then for you to see in your life, are you praising God the way that He deserves it? Are you living for God the way that He deserves are you glorifying His name? Are you praising Him? Is your whole life about God who deserves all of our worship, all of our glory, and all of the honor that we can pour out to Him every single minute of every single day? Because we are nothing, but God has made us something. Romans 3.23, which most of you are, are probably familiar with, reminds us where we stand with God. It says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us who match up to God. There's none of us who can stand side by side with God or even sit at His footstool or even get into the heavens where He is at. None of us deserve that. All of us deserve what the Bible tells us is hell because we're dirty, filthy, sinning rags before God. It's not a very pretty picture, is it? But that's what we deserve when we compare ourselves to the Almighty God. And so it takes us back. How can it be, God, that you, you want a relationship with us? How can it be, God, that you provide salvation for us? How can it be, God? And then when I think back to the way we live today, the way our society lives today, it's just like what Moses described in his day in Deuteronomy. If you want to flip over there with me in Deuteronomy 12.8, and it's spoken of all through the Old Testament and referred to in the New Testament as well. And it says this, You shall not all do as we are doing here today. And what do you think they were doing here today? Well, it tells us, Every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. Does that ring a bell for our society today? Does that not point to the society that we live in? If we feel like doing it, we're going to do it. I don't care if God said not to. I don't care if my mama told me not to. If I feel like it, I'm going to do it. And so we look around and, and we look at this nation that we live in and we say, why is the nation in the shape that it is in today? We've gone mad. Look at our morals. Look at what we say now is right that God has said wrong. And we can take it right back to what this verse says and is, is repeated throughout the Bible. We're doing what's right in our own eyes. And we don't care what God says. That's not keeping God in the proper perspective. That's not keeping God where He desires to be in right relation with us. He says we are to be obedient. We are to surrender our lives to Him and follow after this Word. If this Word says do it, do it. If it says don't do it, don't do it. It's as simple as that. But we have taken upon ourselves to say, well, I don't care for that part. I'll just take that page out. And I like some of this other part. That's not keeping God's Word where it deserves to be. God gave us this Word. God gave it to us to live our lives by. Are we living our lives by the Word of God? Do you know the Word of God to live 
your life by? That may be another question we need to ask ourselves. Statistics show that this generation that we live in now is the most ignorant generation of Scripture in the United States history since they brought the Bibles and the Scriptures over with them when they came to the United States. We're the most ignorant about our Bibles in the United States history right now. Can you believe that? Check it out for yourselves. Look it out for yourself. See if that's true. Why don't you just answer it for your own self in your own life? How much of this Bible do you know? And how much of it do you live by? It's important we know it so that we don't do what's right in our eyes. We do what's right in God's eyes. How can it be, God, that you care about me? God has a better way. Now for the good news. God has a better way for us. Go back to that psalm chapter again, Psalm 8. Psalm 8, look at verse 5. You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. God wants to crown us with glory and honor. <laughs> I'm not sure this is complete until you have a relationship with Jesus Christ that you are crowned with honor and glory. Now some, if you read back on this, some think it's talking about Jesus and, and some think it's talking about us, about the glory and honor. But if you go back to Genesis and look at verse 6, it says that you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And that's what God told us that man would do, would have dominion, and we are supposed to rule over this earth of ours. Have you been crowned with the glory and honor that God wants you to have? Are you lifting up when you have that glory and honor and you're right with God, the first thing that you want to do is pass that glory and honor over to God and give it back to Him because we are not worthy of the glory and honor. Jesus Christ is. Do you give that glory and honor to Him or do you like to take a little bit to yourself? Do you want people to notice you and, and brag on you? We have nothing to be bragged on ourselves about. It's all the work of Jesus Christ that deserves all the glory and honor. Nothing of ourselves. James 4.8 Flip over there with me if you'd like. James 4.8 says this, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Did you hear that? If we seek God, if we draw near to God, it says He will draw near to us. Have you taken that step in your life of drawing near to God? When we draw near to God and we repent of our sins and we ask for forgiveness and we turn and follow after God, He cleanses us. He washes away that sin. Have you drawn near to God? And then we can go right back to that question again. How can it be that God would let me draw near to Him? It's only through the cleansing of ourselves through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can draw near to God. It's nothing of ourselves. That's why he said we can't boast or we can't brag on ourselves. It's all the work of Jesus Christ upon that old rugged cross that cleanses us. How can it be? How can it be, God? Most familiar verse in the Bible tells us how can it be. John 3.16 Flip over there. I want you to read it again with your own eyes. Read it and soak it in. The love of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he, what? he loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Life. How can that be, God, that you sent Jesus, the perfect, 
holy Jesus for me, for you. How can that be, God? I, I really don't understand that. Because I think of my own children. You think of your own children. Would you give your children up for a dirty, rotten sinner? Most would say, no, I would not. But that's exactly what God did for you. That's exactly what Jesus did when He chose to leave the heavens and come down and get upon that cross and die for your sins and my sins. How can that be? It's because of the love that God has for us. The love that He has. Why does God love us that much? Well, the answer to that question is found in Genesis 127. 127 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God loves us so much because he created us like himself. Nothing else on this earth or in this universe can claim that, that God made them like Himself in His image. God loves Himself and anything that He would create in His own image, He loves. He loves. Have you thought about that lately? How can that be that you're created in God's image? That just... You may be a lot smarter. You probably are a lot smarter than me, but I can't comprehend that that I was created in God's image, that He created me like Himself and He loves me. How can that be that I'm like God? Another thing that might blow your mind, I've been reading a little bit on the Holy Spirit, and as you know, the Holy Spirit's a person in Himself, and that Holy, per Holy Spirit person lives inside of you. So God, as a person through the Holy Spirit, lives inside of you. Now how can that be? Now you sit down and think about that for a while and think on that. The Holy Spirit, as a person, lives inside of you. Only God can work that out. Only God. We only have one hope in this world, and that's Jesus Christ. If you're putting your hope in anything else other than Jesus Christ, you're putting your hope in the wrong thing. If you're putting your hope in your children, your spouse, your job, your money, Whatever it is, if you're putting your hope in anything but Jesus, your hope is in the wrong spot. And everything else will fail you except a relationship with Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Peter 1 and verse 3 with me. It says this, 1 Peter 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and it does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. Are you? Are you greatly rejoicing in the only living hope that you have, and that is Jesus Christ? And it goes on to tell us that it's an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, can't be taken away, does not fade, reserved in heaven for you. How can that be? It can be because God loves you. And God made you in His image. I'm a lot like Job. Job said in his letter that he wrote. Let me flip over here real quick to it. I want to read you what Job said. I think you all will identify with Job a little bit here. In Job 9 and verse 2. He says this. Truly, I know it is so. Truly, I know God loves me. Truly, I know that he, sa he can save me through Jesus Christ, has saved me. But then we have to ask the question, but how can a man be righteous before God? And that's what I ask so many times about myself. God, how can I be righteous before you? 
And the answer is what we just read. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Only Jesus. How can we be righteous? Jesus. Are you righteous? If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're righteous before God. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one may come unto the Father except through Me. There's only one way to heaven, folks. And once you get there, as we read, uh, it can't be taken away, but there's only one way. And that's Jesus Christ. That's how it can be. That's how true life is and can be, is through Jesus Christ. Is your life this morning about Jesus Christ? Ask yourself that. Is your life about Jesus Christ? If it's anything else, you're on the wrong path. Anything but Jesus is the wrong path path. You've got to get back on the right path. Everything about Jesus. If every one of us in here this morning was everything about Jesus, we wouldn't have to worry about Awana workers. We wouldn't have to worry about van drivers. We wouldn't have to worry about the budget because if everything was focused on Jesus, we would be taking care of everything and we would have no worries except reaching people for Jesus Christ. So let me ask you again, is your life all about Jesus this morning? Closing up with this verse back in Psalm 8 where we started. Look at the last verse. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Can you praise God like that this morning? Can you say that with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul? How excellent, Lord, is your name in all the earth. I want to live for you. I'm going to give my all for you. I will die for you, God. I love you so much. Can you say that? Can you brag on Jesus and give him all praise, honor, and glory this morning? Because that is truth. How excellent is your name in all the earth. So how can it be, Lord? It can be through Jesus. Miss Jody, if you and Leanne want to start to make your way up here. I want you to think about that this morning. I want you to really lift up some time in prayer this morning to the Lord. God, is my life all about you? Have I given my all for you? Think about that this morning. Are you giving God all you got like he has given you all he has through his son, Jesus Christ? Let's pray.